Hey guys, one clue here. I hope all of you are doing really well and having a really great day. It has been a while since we had the last update for Ubidex. So here we are, we are now sitting at the version 2.7.0. So let's get started and right into it. As you can see, we are back again on GitHub. And as always, we wanna make sure that you do understand what kind of updates are going into this release what is happening and at the end we want to update to the latest firmware version together so that you do know how to do it even if you never have watched any of my videos before so first things first we do have a little bit of improvements when it comes to the access point mode stability and it does stop unnecessary wi-fi reconnections which has been done by e anderson in the pr 815 thanks for doing that that's really helpful this basically improved that when you do set up your bidx for the first time that it does not crash or any unnecessary other wi-fi reconnections are happening we also do have a fix when it comes to the stratum port max limit verification by TerraTag. thanks for doing that a new feature that i have introduced is the pid fan controller this has been done in collaboration with pmax so thanks to you for working with me on this together it's awesome it's a nice new feature and we will take a look on it in just a second there's also a move over to a new ESP IDF. We're now using the version 5.4.1, which has been introduced by E. Anderson. Thanks for doing that. We also do have a couple of handlers and Wi-Fi error messages by Mutatrum. So now if your Wi-Fi connection is some sort of weird or something is not really working as intended, then you should see a couple of messages what is happening there. There's also a fix when it comes to the connected display. So now you do see that if your device is connected to your Wi-Fi, it will display, hey, I'm connected. We also do have a little bit of self-test display cleanup by Mutatrium. This is more on the end for manufacturers and not really needed for the average user. So that's totally fine, but also a nice feature. We also do have now the OSMU, the Open Source Minus United logo, been displayed on the screen if you do boot up your BIDX for the very first time. Then there was a couple of fixes for the PID controller by me, which uh, the PID controller, I should have gone into this a little bit more in detail. It is a new way how to control your BIDX fan. This is a new fan controller, which is way more reliable and way better working than any of the other fan controllers that we had before. You still can decide between the manual fan and the new PID controller. We also do have now a quick link service in it, by me, uh, which is basically just a little bit of a rework on the quickling service there. We also do have a remove of underpower failures by Benjamin, uh, which is on the self-test as well. We also do have a fix when it comes to the, the polarity pin. Previously, some of you guys were really, really confused by the fact that you can go into settings and set the polarity for your fan. This thing never did anything. Some people had the conspiracy theory, which was quite interesting, quite nice to read, especially on Reddit and any other platforms. People were thinking that if you do hit it or uncheck it, that your, span, that your fan spins the other way around, which is totally wrong, but it's still funny to read. And what the intended use was, there are a couple of fans that require a higher voltage for applying new settings and other fans that do read a zero voltage for applying new settings. So it's basically a way how you do have the bit uh, set to the fan and to the fan controller. So some fans need a, a one to apply new settings and other fans need a zero. Basically, this was never working, which also showed us that all the fans that have been used so far are not requiring this feature so we removed it entirely because it is unnecessary and not really needed unless we do see any five volt fans that are needing this it is not coming back because removing code is better than just adding code there's also a fix on spelling error by me which is just a little bit of cleanup when it comes to yeah just uh, looking at some code and that's Okay, there. We also do have make latest release into a link for the changelog by Kuku Vet. I do hope I do pronounce this name correct here, which is a nice new feature that it now also shows you the changelog that have been happened on this. 
So this is really nice and we will go over all these changes in just a second. We also do have a little bit of fine tuning when it comes to the PID controller. And so now it is working way better. Some of you guys are overclocking or changing the heat sink and other stuff on your BIDX device, which was causing the PID controller initially not to catch up quickly enough with the heat sink and the heat and everything else. So the fan was basically not spinning up quick enough. So now this has been fixed. The PID controller is a little bit more aggressive. There's still potential to make it even more aggressive, but for now I've tested it with four different heat sinks and in all it seems very fine. So this is the current setting there. We also do have a reorder in the code when it comes to the check for best difficulty in system C uh, for preventing missing block file notification by Aaron3481. Thanks for doing that. So basically there was an issue when it comes to the uh, check for best difficulty. Usually what was happening is that yeah, basically your device was checking for that, but if it moved on to the next one and trying to find the next diff, it was never really showing you, uh, it was showing you the notification, but it was clearing it out or not storing it in the preferred way that it needs to be. A nice new feature as well is the screensaver timeout. So now you do have the option if you have your BitX right next to you on your night desk, I mean, some of you guys would love to sleep with the BitX. It's totally fine. Now you can put in a screensaver and you do have a timeout so that your screen goes off and on if you do press a button, for example, which is really nice. I love this feature and I do have it enabled on all my BitXs because if you do run the screen for the entirely of for the entirety of the life of your BitX, it will probably at some point just burn up or burn in or any other things because these screens are not really uh, yeah, good. So they're really cheap ones. And it might be that at some point your screen is no longer working or just showing old stats because they are burnt in. With the screensaver timeout function, this is no longer a thing. There's also now a implementation or a tooltip by Gigi G4. Uh, now you do have a little bit of tooltips when it comes to the share reject reason. If you do connect, for example, to a pool and you do have slow connections or anything else, your miner is working on old work and is not catching up to the new one, you will have a above target rejected reason and now there's a little bit of a tooltip to all the things that could happen, which is really nice to see. We also do have a new fix on the Stratum user split by me, which is just a minor one. Then we do have a simplify on the share rejection explanation by GGG4. This is an interesting name, by the way. Um, so yeah, now it's a little bit more simplified when it comes to the code. Initially, the, the pull request that was made and was merged into it was a little bit too much so it got simplified again which is great because now we don't need to have too much new files and new code in there we also do have an update on the git ignore uh, file and also a simplify layout a little bit of a fix when it comes to the refresh button in the ui it does also unify the headings and margins so in general the ui looks a little bit better and smoother it's a little bit more responsive and the theme color section is also looking a little bit nicer now. The initial page load caused multiple inconsistent get responses, which has been fixed by Axis Ray. Thanks for doing that. There was a sort of a, a long issue on GitHub where people were seeing multiple times the same inconsistent get responses from the API. Now this has been fixed and is no longer the case, which is nice. Thanks for doing that. We also do have a fix when it comes to the automatic display on by Terrat Hack. So he was improving on this screensaver timeout function. So if you now do press a button, it will automatically go back on and it will be on the correct track. So this is really nice. There's also a little bit of a fix when it comes to the track rejection reason to avoid any flickering, which is nice because previously when you do have seen any rejection reasons and you're hovering over it and a new share was coming in, it was flickering. Now this has been fixed as well. For the upcoming BitX GT, there is also a fan polarity fix by Scott because I was missing some stuff in there. So thanks for doing that, Scott. And uh, I'm really looking forward for the next BitX. It's going to be an awesome one. We also do have the set gamma turbo power offset uh, to 10 watts. So the offset for the power co consumption that's been used has been refined. It is 
it is still a hard-coded limit in there, but it's it's the same way that we do approach with all the other devices as well. We also do have now a little bit of a rework when it comes to the API um, for the ASIC part, because now all the stuff that has been in the UI, for example, for setting your frequency and your voltage to the ASIC chip has been moved over to the back end and is now sitting in the API. We also do have a fixed increased power reported on the BitX Gamma by Scott, which is nice. So you do see a couple of minor changes and improvements are coming in, especially for the upcoming BitX GT, which is awesome, and also for the BitX Gamma. There is also an update when it comes to the NPM libraries by E. Anderson, which is awesome. And uh, there was a issue where I missed to put the correct default settings for the super into the API. So now I have fixed this as well, as well as we've moved over to the latest LTS version of Node by E. Anderson. Thanks for doing that. And last but not least, I totally forgot to set the default values for the max model of the original, the OG BitX, the BitX Max, and we've or I've implemented them in there as well. So that's basically the whole thing. It is fantastic. We do have five new contributors, Cuckoo Vexi, as I said, I do hope that I pronounce your name correct here, uh, as well as Aaron GGG4, Circus and Access Ray. Thank you guys for being contributors and contributing to this system in general. Open source makes this scene shine and it is awesome to see that more people are interested in it and that we do attract more developers as well. So now let's go down here and let's quickly download the ESP minor bin. Uh, let me go to my downloads. Let me save that and override it as well as the www. I wanna override the old one. Now let's hop over to my BitX. You do see this one is running at the version 2.6.1. Why is it running on this version? Because the version 2.6.2, 2.6.3 and 4 and 5 had minor changes in them that were not increasing or modifying or changing anything on the BitX that you actually do need. Those were changes that hot fixes and changes that we needed on the manufacturing part. So we also make sure that manufacturers are up on track and do have the most reliable software that is out there so that they can build the best bit eggs for you and that you are assured about the fact that you hopefully do get a high quality bit eggs. There are plenty of differences when it comes to that, but we'll try our best. So you do see this one is looking really old and now we want to go over to the settings page. The first thing that we want to do is we want to update the website. So I go into downloads, I go to my www.bin. Wait, let me quickly check here. It says version 2.7.0 and we're currently sitting at version 2.5.1. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm running an even older model here, which is insane. Shame on me. Uh, yeah, this is really old. So let's do that. Downloads the www file and let's quickly wait for that. It's you do see it is super simple to download the files and do it. I could even just click in the version control here in the BitX, uh, in the BitX UI and just click on esp-miner.bin or www.bin. You currently do not see this because the screen here is a little bit limited from where it is showing, but nevertheless. So we updated the website. Now what we need to do is we need to update the firmware as well. So we go into downloads, we select the ESP minor bin, we update it because currently you do see in settings is nothing. This is totally normal. If you do see this as well, just make sure that you do update both files, the www.bin and the esp-minor.bin, then your BitX is restarting. I highly always recommend to update the www file first because this is just updating the front end and if there are minor changes maybe you will see sometimes new stuff but in in general it is a good approach to just update the website first and then go for the firmware because if you do update the firmware then your device is actually restarting so now let me quickly press ctrl shift r to reload the page here we go we do see our settings we're currently sitting on a bit x gamma here and we see 525 is the default for the frequency and 1150 is the default for the settings let's go over to the dashboard we do see here everything is up on track 
the power consumption should be all right the pool down here is all right you can can currently not see this but that's totally fine we have no rejected reasons so far let's see if we do get one but let me quickly go over a couple of changes so pool settings is just normal customization is also just normal we can change it whatever we want here let's go to orange and settings is also just normal we also do see if i click on check that i can highlight over this here and this would bring me over to the version 2.7.0 exactly to the loud to the tag of it and if you do click on it you can take a look yourself on all the changes that have been happened here so let's close this page let's make sure that we do click on logs and take a look on here everything is just looking normal and perfect we still don't have any rejected reason so unfortunately i cannot really show you that but it is looking way better and uh, it does have a little bit of a more clean view because now all these thingies all these little all these little cards where information are stored in them they are aligned and better in general so now let's quickly go over to the settings and let me show you what you can do so you do notice that automatic fan control is activated but there is a weird new button uh, usually we were used to this uh, progress bar here which allows you to set the fan speed and let me spin it up to 94 percent here um, which is all right but what we can now do is we can activate the fan control and now you do see it tells you target temperature currently it is sitting at 60 degrees celsius i usually have it at 55 so let's apply that and now the fan should spin up a little bit more what it's trying to do now is it is trying to actually get down the asic to 55 degrees celsius and it's trying to push as hard as possible and if it reaches the temperature it's trying to adjust the fan to not be too noisy so this is the automatic new fan control as well as we do have the display timeout in minutes so i usually do set this to something like three minutes if you do apply this you need to restart your bed eggs um, but this shouldn't be an issue in general let me put it to five minutes no i just looked at the screen and it's turning off because the bed eggs is online for more than three minutes if I would put it to four minutes, then it would wait for the four minutes, then go offline, which is awesome to see. So now the, the time feature for your screen is working as well. If you do go over to the dashboard, still no rejected reason here, which is good. So unfortunately I cannot show you that, but if I would had any rejected shares, then it would count up and it would tell me what kind of rejected reason we do have and if you hover over it you get even more information about what is going wrong with your device basically most of the time in 99.9 percent .9 of the time nothing is wrong with it it's just some things that happen in bitcoin mining that's it for today's video i do thank everybody for tuning in here and if you haven't subscribed make sure to do so so that you do stay up to date on the latest changes on the BedEx and the firmware that we do maintain. Thanks for being here. See you in the next one. Keep hashing.